over it. The forgiveness of your sin was settled 2,000 years ago when Christ died for you on Calvary. I believe one of the greatest blessings of being saved is absolutely to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that all of my sins are forgiven. Why? Because the Bible says that all have sinned. The Bible said there's not a just man. There's none good, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, then I know that as a sinner, that even though I commit sin in this flesh, that Christ has already forgiven all of my sin. How do I know that? Well, I want you to notice several passages. First of all, in 1 Corinthians 15, we're told that He died for our sins. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3, He said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. Now I want you to think about something. How foolish would it be for God Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, to send His Son to this earth to die for our sins, pay for every one of them by His blood, and then require you to do something in order to receive that forgiveness? How ridiculous would it be for God to give His Son for all of your sin, spill His blood there, turn His back on Him, forsake Him, and then require you to walk down in the church aisle or to get down on your knees and pray and beg God to forgive you? Well, God already forgave you. The Bible says Christ died for our sins. Not only did He die for our sins, but I want you to notice in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that He became our sin. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says, For He, that is God, hath made Him, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? That is, Christ knew no sin. He was the sinless, perfect, undefiled Son of God. He knew no sin. And yet God hath made him, he says, to be sin for us. Why? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In other words, when Jesus Christ hung on that cross and he bled and he died and he suffered for our sin, the Bible says that God Almighty, as it were, turned his back on his son. Jesus Christ on that cross cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, I'll tell you why he had forsaken him. Because God Almighty cannot look upon sin. And Jesus Christ became sin on that cross. And the Bible said that he went to hell for us. And he was buried and he was raised again the third day. And the Bible says right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that God, based on what Christ did on that cross, reconciled us to himself. You see, we were enemies of God. We were apart from God. We were strangers from the covenant's promise. We were without hope and without God in this world, according to Ephesians chapter 2. But notice what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Now think about that. If you've been reconciled to God by Jesus Christ, why would you need to get down and Pray and beg God to forgive you of your sins. You're already reconciled to Him. Your salvation is based upon what He did. You've been reconciled to God. It may be somebody out there, you're already saved. You know that you trust Jesus Christ, but you never realized that you were reconciled to God and that all your sins are under His blood and they're all taken care of. Does that mean that you want to just go out and sin and live any way you want to? Paul said to that question in Romans chapter 6, God forbid... God forbid that we should ever use grace as a license to go about doing that which we want to do in our flesh. We are to be motivated and to serve God based on the basis of the salvation we have. But the works have nothing to do with our salvation. He says, All things are of God, verse 18, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Notice verse 19, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. I want you to 